pictures of what apparently is the new SRAM Red group set has leaked online. So we're a bit late on this one, and that's because we're filming the podcast a bit earlier than usual at the moment to work around Nick's actual job. Uh, but leaked images of levers, cassette, rear mech, and calipers allegedly from the new SRAM Red have appeared online. The photos appear to be in line with patents we've already seen, and it's very possible this could be for real. The hoods look smaller in size and more ergonomic than the current red, which makes sense, as this puts it in line with Rival and Force D2. There's also auxiliary buttons at the top of the shifters that we assume might be customizable. The rear derailleur and disc calipers both have cutout sections that suggest they're probably been a bit of a focus on weight reduction, and it also looks like they're taking inspiration from the mountain bike world. So the rear derailleur appears to include a version of SRAM's magic wheel. This is basically a pulley that allows the outer part of the wheel to keep turning, even if something gets stuck in the inner part, like a stick or debris. That's really hard to, to understand. Have you seen one of these before, Nick? Yes, so on the Type T mountain bike rear max that SRAM's released, it's on there. So if you imagine the teeth is like an outer ring, that is separate from the inner pulley wheel that's got the bearings in it. So if a stick was to get in and seize that inner wheel, stop it from moving, the actual teeth will still rotate on top of the outer wheel. So your chain can still move forward. You're not going to just snap your red rail off. So the pulley wheels have like a free wheel in them kind of thing? Pr pretty much, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so it's still all unconfirmed reports at this stage, but it's looking pretty likely new red will be released this year. Uh, I've had a look at the photos. I think it looks... Nice. It looks really good. Um, you've got a couple of theories on some bits and pieces around it. So there's obviously these auxiliary buttons on the shifters, which that like Shimano have been doing that for years though, haven't they? Uh, yes, but this works slightly different. I think obviously it's just theories. Um, the auxiliary buttons on the photos, I don't think are actually buttons. I think those are just uh, rubber grommets uh, hiding where your reach adjust might be. I right. think the buttons are going to be on the inside of the levers. Inside of the lever, rather. Yeah. Right, okay. So if you set up SRAM at the moment, you've got, you can set so, up on so an like app. A, like, a, like a compact thummy, almost. Similar, yeah, but a bit higher up. So yeah. I don't know, you, you most likely would be able to set them up for extra things, how you want to shift if you just want to use one lever on one side or whether you want to activate a drop post to it. Um, there's other theories that it might be able to control your head units. Yeah. So instead of having to take your hands off to change... Again, this is all like, Shimano stuff, isn't it? Or at yes. least the head unit bit of it is oh, Shimano Oh, Kampak stuff. as well has done it before. So it's not... Kampak actually has buttons. They've had buttons from the first uh, EPS that came out inside the levers that you can use for head units uh, and things like that. So that's one thing. Um, other theories are... If you're looking at the chain and cassette, it looks exactly like the mountain bike Type T chain and cassette, which is... I think really good. Uh, so on that one, they say the more power you put through the group set while shifting, the better it will shift. So what? currently at the moment when you shift on almost all group sets, you have to kind of clutch your knees or reduce your power slightly to kind of not make that whole clunking noise and yeah. just destroy your group set. Where uh, on the mountain bike ones, uh, apparently optimal shifting is where you can shift above 500 watts, it'll still shift perfectly. So in racing or if you in the wrong gear when you hit a steep hill, you don't have to worry about just putting the power through and pressing the button. So you think that that mountain bike tech might be coming into yes, the SRAM uh, Red? The, the, well, this is pure speculation, but just from the photos, the chain and cassette looks exactly the same. That does sound than good. Type T. So, and it would make sense because if they're going to release a new SRAM Red this year, you would hope that they're kind of making it better, not just doing the same thing with an added gear, like what's happened in the past has gone from 11 to 12 speed on certain group sets. Uh, where with this, if they can make it lighter, they can make you shift under power. Um, yeah, it's just all good stuff that could hopefully come out with it. You have a theory on the power meter as well. Um, I'm hoping they do the power meter similar to what they've done with uh, Rival and Force, where you don't just have the, the double chain ring with the power meter integrated that weighs out along with the teeth. Um, I'm hoping they're going to do it as part of the axle as well. I can't see why not, because I already have the technology in all the other group sets. Is, is the axle one double-sided? Well, I've, I've, I've got one on my rival, and it's definitely one-sided. Yes, but the, the crankbase is also one. It's, it's not about sided. It's more about it's, it's, it's axle-based, if that makes sense. No, it does. I do, yeah, I do, pedals yeah. pedals uh, run down the, the aspect of double-sided or single-sided, meaning there's a power meter just in one pedal. 
Yeah. But the one axle combines both sides of the crank arms. Fact or speculation? Speculation. But no, it's just a fact. The cr- <laughs> axle. Wait, you said speculation and fact. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, I mean, I'm not a power meter expert. Right, but so, it, it's, so it's not a fact, but you're pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. Okay, yes. I look forward. I look forward to seeing comments. I might even look at the comments this the time. exact opposite to Emily's comments where I'm just getting rinsed like <laughs> usual, but yeah. So SRAM are definitely keeping very quiet on this one. I actually messaged one of the SRAM guys that I talked to quite a bit. Um, and I, 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 I messaged him and I said... Uh, looks like red, new Reds coming out this year. Are we going to be able to get a set for Cade Media? It says that he's seen it and he hasn't responded, but he always responds when I message him. Left you so on red. He has, yeah. So I'm assuming it's a lot easier for him to say nothing than it is to lie to me, yep. which is which is why there's no response. Before Force, they let us know months in advance and we had the group set, the two of us. So, yes. I mean, they did tell us where this one, they've not told us anything. So it's a bit of a... Well, so, so what Nick's referring to is when the new SRAM Force D2, D2. was launched, uh, it's pro- what is it, a year ago now or something like that? Something like that, whatever it was. Um, Nick got asked if he would build a bike for the launch content of that video, which obviously I built with him. So it was initially via Nick's relationship with SRAM uh, and then they asked, or they brought me into the loop on it as the person that was actually filming the video. Um, and the build video is absolutely massive. It's got something like 90 odd thousand views, um, which actually got launched on the day that it went live. So I was kind of hoping, I, I, I was kind of hoping by me messaging him, he might be like, oh, actually, yeah, let's get, let's get another new group set over to those guys. And we would have had it for launch, but they've gone quiet. So I'm guessing we're not going to have it for launch. Shram's coming to visit me next week, so... Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's still a thing, <laughs> obviously. It's. What price point do we think it's going to be? I'm assuming it's going to be really expensive because it's their top end group set. The Campag group set is four and a half thousand for their top end one. Five and a half thousand. Yeah. Uh, Dura Ace is. 3,600, but Dura Ace and SRAM becomes a bit more complicated because of how you spec it. How you spec it, yeah, whether you've got power meters, no power meters. Um, I'm hoping that it, it comes in line with Shimano and not Campag because that's. But obviously, we just don't know. Uh, in the past, I think SRAM's released their rival in force ahead of Shimano, and it's always come out uh, considerably cheaper than Shimano. But it's it's going to be a lot of money. But it's, SRAM do generally like to do things a bit different, and hopefully, one of the things they've done a bit different is found a way of making it a bit cheaper as well. It would, if you know, like say for example, big group set manufacturer launch their new top end group set, and they go, actually, we've not managed to save any weight. It still weighs however many kilos, which is pretty light because it's our top end one. But what we have managed to do is cut the cost, so it's five hundred quid cheaper. I would be very happy. Oh no, with that. but no, 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 not for me. <laughs> yeah, they've cut out. There's loads of cutouts in there. So if you've lost weight, you've lost material. So it should be cheap as well. Can't you? Be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand if you made it lighter by different materials, but if you just cut out pieces of the rotors and the, the rear mech, it should be yeah, a smaller hood. Like so it, that's yeah. less. Yeah. Everything's good. less. It should just be cheaper. Yep, the chain's yeah, got holes in it, so that's <laughs> less materials. The cassettes have got holes in it. It has to be less. I like your point. <laughs>